Over the years, Apple has really developed a reputation for being anti-repairable. When you're trying to repair some sort of component on an iPhone, be it a screen or battery, you'll replace that part, but then you'll notice that there's going to be some features on that iPhone that are now locked due to software. And today I'm going to be breaking down all the modern iPhones, so from iPhone 14 all the way to 7, on different components that when you swap them out or when you try to repair them, you might be locking some sort of feature with that iPhone. I'm going to be highlighting what are these issues and give you guys some solutions to bypass these issues. What I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be presenting the component and then I'll break down what sort of iPhones are affected by replacing this component and kind of outline basic process for resolving each, each of these issues. Some of them are going to be more harder than others. Some of them are going to be really trivial or simple, but I'm going to be giving you guys the full picture when it comes to repairing iPhones. So let's start off with the components. My first component I'm going to be presenting is the screen. So the screen is going to affect nearly every single iPhone within the modern era, from iPhone 14 all the way to 8. If you're working on iPhone 7, it's going to be an easy switch where you just switch the screen for a new one and then that's that. But if you're working on those iPhone 14s all the way to iPhone 8, you're going to be losing two different features, which is going to be True Tone and Auto Brightness. True Tone is essentially a feature on the iPhone where your iPhone's kind of able to detect the amount of light within your environment, and then it will adjust the colors on the screen to be either warmer or cooler in order to kind of adjust the environment. And Auto Brightness, it kind of does the same thing, but Auto Brightness instead adjusts the brightness based on your environment. For instance, if you're indoors, maybe you're in a pitch black room, you're brightness is going to be at the very lowest but if you for instance step outside of that pitch black room that brightness is going to start shooting up and your iPhone's naturally going to get brighter so those two features aren't really for instance very very core but it's still very annoying that when you switch a screen you're going to be losing out on those two features to resolve that you're going to need some sort of programmer now these programmers are going to be pretty f straightforward to use so essentially how these programmers work is that you take your old screen and you attach it to the programmer the programmer is going to document every all the information about that screen and store it within that programmer. Afterwards, you grab a brand new screen, put it onto the programmer, and then you're able to write all the information that you grabbed from the old screen. Afterwards, you can take that new screen and put it onto the iPhone with no problem, and you should have True Tone and Auto Brightness enabled. You're going to have to go through an additional hurdle now if you're working on iPhones 14 all the way to 11. So this issue is going to be Apple's non-genuine parts message. This non-genuine parts message is going to appear within your notifications or and also your settings. If you've never encountered this message before and you've just replaced your screen and this is your first time ever seeing it, you might be kind of scared at first. You might think that, look, this is like a non-genuine parts message. Did I do something wrong? Did I break something? But in reality, this message is sort of related to the serial number found on the iPhone screen. So to give you guys a quick overview, every single screen is going to have some sort of serial number attached with it that correlates with the motherboard. When those serial numbers between the screen and the motherboard do not match up, Apple's going to display you a non-genuine parts message. And essentially this doesn't really mean much. You're not going to be losing out on any sort of features. You're not going to, it's not your screen is going to blow up within two days or something like that. It, your phone is going to be working fine. All you can really deduce is that a brand new screen or a different screen from the factory has been installed. Now, People have in the past proved that this is true by grabbing two different iPhones purchased from the same exact I Apple store and swapping the screens between those two iPhones. And essentially, when they swap the screens between those two iPhones, keep in mind those screens are genuine OEM and brand new. And they still have that error. So even though they're using like brand new OEM parts, they're still getting that non-genuine parts message. Even if you do see that error, you can't really deduce that a bad screen or your screen is going to be bad. It doesn't really mean that much. So that notification, this non-genuine parts, is going to appear in your notifications for probably like a few days and then it'll move down to the settings. But it is still fairly annoying to deal with this message. If you're fixing an iPhone for a customer or like a family member slash friend, if you explain to them that this non-genuine part parts message doesn't really mean anything, kind of like how I just did, they'll be fairly understanding and won't mind that message. But if you're trying to refurbish iPhones, let's say to resell, um, this is going to be one factor that you kind of want to address. Because if you're trying to resell this iPhone and it has that non-genuine parts message, 
a buyer is going to look at that iPhone and think that it's defective. Even though it doesn't really mean anything, a buyer is still going to think it's defective. So for that reason, you really do want to resolve this issue. It's not going to be an easy repair. There have been times where I have been able to just use that programmer and program True Tone and Auto Brightness onto the display, and I would not get a genuine parts message. But there have been other times where I would go through that process and I would get that non-genuine display. The best way to make that non-genuine parts message display 100% of the time when it comes to your iPhone screen is going to include some soldering. Every single iPhone screen is going to have like that tiny little chip that's located on the back. This tiny little chip basically t is able to communicate between the motherboard and the screen and it, it basically tells the iPhone that look this iPhone screen is the original genuine display. What you're going to need to basically do is take that tiny little chip off that iPhone and move it onto the new screen. And once you do that and you have that old chip on the new display, your iPhone is going to be kind of tricked into thinking, look, it's the original display and it's not going to throw that genuine parts message. And that process does seem kind of easy, but it's going to require some soldering. And for that reason, if you've never really soldered before or if you're not really that experienced with this form of repair, it's going to be rather difficult. For one, there's going to be a lot of ways that you could kind of screw up. If you overheat it and you break the chip, you're going to be out of luck and you're going to be stuck with your iPhone throwing that non-genuine parts message forever, unless you go to the Apple store and ask them to fix it. And there's a lot of ways where you could mess up the new screen as well, either adding too much heat or adding too much solder somewhere, shorting out the board. For that reason, this repair is not going to be intended for everyone and it's really not an easy repair to do by any means. But if you really want that non-genuine parts message to disappear within the settings, you have to go through these steps to try to resolve it. Now for the battery, it's going to affect iPhone 14 all the way down to XS. When you swap out your old battery with a new battery, you're going to notice that the battery health within settings is no longer visible. Alongside that issue, Apple's once again is going to throw you that non-genuine parts message, but this time for the battery. So what causes this error and how do we fix it? So this error is once again tied to some sort of serial number issue where there's going to be a tiny little board found on the battery of all iPhones. And this little board is going to be called the battery management system. And essentially this is what tells your iPhone that this battery is the original battery straight from the factory and not to th throw the genuine parts message. So all you have to do is snip the battery management system or BMS board off the battery and then you have to take that tiny little connector and then spot weld it onto a new battery. And while you're doing all this, you gotta be very, very careful that the anode and cathode do not cross at any point, or you could risk starting a fire. And if you're changing out a battery, the last thing you wanna worry about is your f house burning down or your shop burning down. So for that reason, you gotta be very, very careful when you're doing this repair. If you do put it back onto the phone as is, you will notice that the non-genuine parts message does disappear, but you're stuck with the old battery health. So you swap the battery at 60% and you put in the new battery with the old BMS board, you're still gonna see 60% as your battery health. So you gotta go through one extra hurdle, which is buying some sort of little flex connector. You attach that flex connector to that BMS board, you're able to now program a new battery health onto the programmer, and you're able to wipe the cycles clean from that BMS board. And after that, you can put in the new battery connected with the old BMS board connected with a flex connector, and once that's in the iPhone, you are all set. You have a brand new battery with 100%. So that was quite a mouthful to go through, but yeah, that, those that's essentially the steps that you need to go through if you want to replace a modern iPhone with a new battery. Now, the rear camera is going to be the next component that I'm gonna be covering. So the rear camera, having throwing an issue is a relatively new problem. It's only going to affect iPhone 14 through 12. The only issue that you're going to be seeing is the non-genuine parts message. So to essentially resolve this issue, you're once again going to need a programmer, but you're also going to need that new camera along with a new uh, flex connector. And basically you want to take off the old camera from the old camera assembly and put on a new camera. After that, you want to solder on a brand new flex connector onto that pad. You can take the information off the old camera and put it onto the new camera using the programmer. And that's effectively how you resolve the rear camera issue. For our fourth component, it's going to be the front camera. So the front camera is going to be quite detrimental if you try to replace that entire assembly. By replacing that entire front camera assembly, you are going to be losing out on Face ID for iPhones 14 all the way to 10. And for the iPhone SEs, you're going to be losing out on True Tone. Luckily, 
if the only issue with your phone is that the front camera is not working and you know that the front assembly is working as intended, you can take the small tiny little front camera off of that assembly and put in a new camera. And you don't really need to use any sort of programmer to resolve these issues. So while doing this repair, you got to be very, very careful that you're not damaging the dot projector and infrared camera because all these components are very, very delicate and they're all grouped together. And it's really, really unfortunate that you can't just like take off the whole front assembly and put in a brand new one. So now that's kind of all the issues outlined with all the modern iPhones. If you guys want the full picture with all the different issues, I'll have a picture right now. Feel free to take a screenshot or if you want, I'll have a link in the description if you want to view it. It. but yeah that's going to be the chart behind all the different repairs for the iPhones as you can see as we go on in the years more and more features are being locked out of our iPhones where switching out components is no longer just an easy process of where you buy a new part and then out with the old in with the new and instead now you have another layer of software which is just preventing us from doing these repairs for that reason it, a lot of the times it does feel like when we do repair one feature let's say a broken screen now we are tasked with trying to resolve two issues which is really discouraging to a lot of people including myself of going through the repair for that reason a lot of people need to amass specialized tools like the programmer spot welder or a soldering iron in order to do these repairs. And you also have to take the time to kind of learn the skills to do these repairs properly. You're tasked with either making some trade-offs right now. Let's say you're interested in replacing your battery because your iPhone now drains out within three hours or like halfway through the day you need to charge your iPhone. And some people aren't willing to go out and buy these specialized tools. For that reason, they're kind of tasked with making the trade-off. Do I deal with that bad battery and have that battery health, or do I just bite the bullet and replace a battery on my own, knowing that I lose out on battery health and now I have annoying message and settings. For people who are interested in kind of starting a business, or for people who are running independent repair shops, this is kind of what's discouraging. Apple every year locks one more feature behind their wall, and do we need to look for solutions that will take more time, or we need to invest more time in looking for different solutions that aren't very easy most of the time to perform and I hope this video is really really helpful for if you really are interested in trying to flip electronics for profit or you're interested in fixing your electronics as a hobby to know that fixing electronics when it comes to Apple and even though I really do enjoy their products working on iPhones is really 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 difficult right now as you can see but with that said, I really hope in the future things do change and get better. But as you can see with the chart, things are only getting worse by the year. Maybe next year the speakers, the loudspeaker will be locked or maybe the charging port will be locked. I'm really staying optimistic, but yeah, I'm, I'm kind of recognizing the reality of the direction we're headed. So I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I wish you guys luck with all your repairs.